<clears throat> yes, we're going again. Right, okay, so I have just rinsed everything out. Um, I have uh, swallowed my mouth out and cogitated, whatever that means, I've no idea. Um, so, just done Jim Beam, which was uh, yesterday. Um, and we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna carry on our run of bourbon. And we're gonna look at um, one that is part of a selection of four whiskies called the Small Batch Bourbon Collection. Um, now all four of them are actually um, from the stable of Jim Beam. And the first one we're gonna have is this one, which is called Booker's. Um, now this is called Booker's because it's named after a guy called Booker No, or Booker Noe, um, because his surname is spelled N-O-E. Now Booker No, and I'll see if I can find a picture of him actually and put it up now. Um, Booker No is uh, the grandson of uh, James B. Beam, who was the uh, guy who rebuilt and reopened the uh, Jim Beam Distillery in 1933. He was a master distiller. Booker was a master distiller at, um, at the distillery in Clermont. And I can't get the damn bottle open. It's, uh, it's sealed with wax at the top, as you can probably see, and I just cannot get the thing on. Uh, oh, well, that wasn't very good. I might have to get a knife out. Um, so yeah, he was uh, he was a master distiller. Um, so he would have been about the fifth or sixth generation, and he um, in in amongst the process of making Jim Beam. This probably could do myself some serious damage if I start screaming. You know what it is. Um, God, Jesus Christ, what's going on? There? Um, yes, he um, started hand selecting casks. Oh, there we go. I should have done that first time. Um, to basically bottle up his his own sort of favourite casks that he liked um, to give as presents to close friends and family. And it proved really popular and they basically decided, you know what, we're actually going to release these to the general public. So this, this was first released in 1992. Um, and it's essentially, they're, they're not single casks, but they're casks that were hand selected originally by Booker. I'm not sure whether he still has a hand in it at the moment. I'm pretty certain he's still alive. Um, but they're hand-selected casks that are then brought together and blended together and released at cast strength. Now, um, the uh, ages are roughly six to eight years old. Um, now, there was a recently a Booker's t uh, anniversary edition. Um, I'm going to say it was in 2012 because that would have been a 20th anniversary where it was uh, a minimum of 10 years, so it was a slightly older but this does even say on the label that it's aged six to eight years. Um, but like I say, it's released at cast strength. So we are looking at 62 point, sorry, 63.25% alcohol. So at cast strength, so it's gonna be pretty strong stuff. So I have a little glass of water ready with my little syringe, but obviously we need to try it first without water. And I appear to have hooked a little bit of wax in there as well. So if I can get that out, I've got no chance, have I? Oh, come on, no. Uh, it's gonna add to the flavor. So, really rich color, really dark. Interestingly, you can, I'll grab the, because I've still got it next to me. You can see the, uh, hopefully see the color of the, the Jim Beam, quite light, quite pale. Not sure whether it's going to pick up on camera, but you should be able to see that the Booker's is a lot richer and a lot darker. So essentially, this is cash strength Jim Beam. But with Jim Beam, they're taking younger whiskies, they're blending a combination of ages. There's no age statement on the Jim Beam. So it doesn't mean that it's... Um, well, actually, is there an age statement? Because it's... Oh no, that's a B, not a number eight. Um, it will be at least four years old uh, because you don't have to put the age statement on if it's longer than four, aged for longer than four years on a straight bourbon. But it could be four years and upwards and it will be a combination of ages. So there's probably some young whiskey in there. Whereas this we know is six to eight, so it's had extra aging. But it's still in essence, you know, a cash strength older Jim Beam because it's made from the same distillery. Now, that on the nose is, is alcohol. There's fruitiness there, but the, the alcohol's content is so high, it's really overpowering it. Yeah, it really quite a burn at the back of the nose, so we'll, we'll give it a go. I'll try, I'll try not to get the wax. Uh, yeah, it comes with a little snack. Ooh. 
Whoa. Jesus. I mean, that's just prickle. There is some lovely sweetness to that. There's some really nice rich raisin in this. But the prickle and the intensity, I mean, it's, it's eye-watering. It's really quite, whoa. Um, probably didn't help my sort of breathing through my nose as I took a sip of whiskey. But um, yeah, it, this one certainly needs water. Which is strange because the Pendarin that I had a few nights ago that was not too dissimilar in terms of alcohol content was absolutely fantastic neat and almost didn't need any water in it at all. Oh, ow. I swallowed that the wrong way and that actually hurt the back of my throat. That kind of bounced off the top of my throat and that really burnt. There is some rich fruitiness in there, but it's very difficult to kind of pick anything up individually. So I'm gonna add some water to it. It's pleasant, I mean, it, it, it's nice, don't get me wrong. There is a nice sweetness to it. But this is one where the, the alcohol content is, is really, really getting in the way. So I'm only going to put, there's not that much left in the glass. So I'm only going to put a few drops in. So let's say six. Well, let's see how we get on with that. I haven't drunk that, uh, I haven't swallowed that bit of wax yet either. So if I start gagging, it's probably because that tiny little bit is got stuck. I shouldn't gag on that. Now that's really opened it up nicely. That's much better. Really rich raisin fruits. Mmm. Much, much nicer. You know what? I'm still going to add some more in. I know there's only a tiny little bit left. But there's a really nice sort of deep, rich brown sugar. Lovely raisiny fruit cakiness. But it's still really intense. Really, really intense. Which is impressive. Don't get, you know, don't get me wrong. That's, I'm not detracting it. It's actually very impressive just how full on this is. Mm. Loads of flavors. Loads of um, sort of sweet fruits on there. Sweet dark fruits. Um, a slight lemoniness almost. That might just be the alcohol burn still. Not sour though. You know, kind of a, a sherbety feel to it. Hmm. Still quite hot though, still quite. There's a lot in there and it's super concentrated and it doesn't really open out. You know, it's, it really smacks you in the face, but then it doesn't really give you a cuddle afterwards. It doesn't open up, it's really tight and really intense and it doesn't really let loose. It goes down in your throat and it's still like, come on. It's good, it's, it's an impressive whiskey for the, just the concentration of flavors that are in there of this kind of, and I didn't do the bit of wax, um, for the concentration of kind of sweetness and um, dark fruits and dark sugar and um, kind of a, a really rich caramel and, and this kind of lemon sherbet feel as well. But it just doesn't, it doesn't lighten up. It's really, really intense. Um, it's, it's a full on whiskey, you know, I, I can imagine sort of, you know, proper American men drinking this with a gun on the table and a cigar in their hand and everything like that. Um, yeah, it's it's a good whiskey. Um, it's just a little bit too full on for me. I love my bourbons, but I prefer just a little bit more subtlety to it. But that's another one done. Uh, so that's two, so I can get one, and, uh, one up tonight, one up tomorrow. But can't really afford to give myself a break because I still need to catch up and give myself a little bit of a head start. But um, the next three will be the other three from the Small Batch Bourbon Collection. Basically, Booker's was the first one where they decided to do, not necessarily limited editions, but they called it the Small Batch Bourbon, where it was a little bit more... It was a kind of precursor to what's now kind of craft whiskies and craft beer and all this lot, where it was a bit more... Um, it was small batch, it was a bit more boutique, a um, bit more expensive, um, but it was a bit more kind of select and a bit more premium. And it does include one of my favourites, but I've not had it in a long time, so we'll see how it goes. So we'll do two of them probably tomorrow, and then I've got myself a bit of a head start. Um, in terms of bookers, uh, in the UK, you're looking at about 50 to 60 quid a bottle. Uh, I think it's about 40, 45 dollars in America, um, but obviously, you know, we've got to get it over here, so in the UK, it's, it's quite a bit more. 
uh, if you can find it and you do like your bourbons, give it a go. Um, I'd probably have a sample first to see whether you really would dig that intensity, but if that's what you're looking for, it's gonna knock your socks off. Right, I'll see you tomorrow.